So with that, I would like to introduce Darby and Darby is going to help us learn more about the features of Teams meetings. Thank you. Thanks, Asaita. Hi, everyone. Um, good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you are tuning in from. My name is Darby O'Brien. I am a customer success manager um, and I work with um, accounts in Pennsylvania as well as Virginia and Maryland and Delaware. Uh, so what I wanted to share with you today, I'm, I'm quickly going to share out an agenda, but I don't want to spend a lot of time on slides. I want to share with you all about the settings that are offered once you are inside of the meeting. So Nash did a great job walking us through all of the settings uh, to get set up for a great meeting. And now I kind of walk, want to walk you through all of your options when you really are in that meeting, um, all the settings. So just a quick agenda here. What I want to talk about um, is that meeting pre-screen. So right before you hop into a meeting, I'm just playing around with those settings, a couple troubleshooting tips. And then inside of the meeting, we're kind of going to work left to right in terms of how the buttons are. So we will go through every setting that lives in the participant list in your chat, um, as well as I'll give you a really quick preview of the breakout rooms feature. Glenn is actually going to cover that in detail later, so please tune in if you want to see that uh, soup to nuts in detail. And then we will cover the more options ellipses. Uh, a lot of cool stuff lives in there, so I am very excited to show it to you all today. So I'm quickly going to switch my screen share one more time, and then we will go ahead and get started. As Asaita said, please feel free to ask questions in the Q&A. Um, either I will demo them live and answer them live, or someone will help you. So uh, if you do have a question, please feel free to ask there. All right. I'm just pulling up my screen here. And today I'm accessing Teams um, actually through a virtual desktop tenant. Uh, so um, if there are any slight nuances, it, which I actually just think is on my end, I'll point them out to you. And we can go ahead and get started. So uh, first and foremost, I'm going to hop into a meeting so we can kick off the meeting settings here. So all I have done here is just select the meeting that I want to join. Uh, a lot of times if the meeting has already begun, a join button will actually appear here on your team's calendar and you can just join that way. So here I have just double clicked into the meeting and I'm going to hit join in the top right corner. So once you have hit the join button, this is what should appear for you. This is that meeting pre screen that I was talking about. So first and foremost, you see um, I don't have a camera connected and I don't have a mic connected. So those are the two nuances I was talking about um, for my virtual desktop. But regardless, should be exactly the same experience that you have. So I just wanted to point out a couple of things here. This is kind of a great spot to troubleshoot before you hop into a meeting, um, especially just by clicking into this little gear icon here to open some device settings. So very commonly, um, especially if you're someone that sometimes uses a headset and sometimes doesn't, this is likely a spot you'll want to check if you're having any audio issues. Sometimes it just connects to the wrong Bluetooth device and it's a matter of switching. So definitely check this out. Make sure that the speaker and the camera are set up to the speaker and the camera that you intend to use. Otherwise, this is where you can decide if you want to turn on your camera or turn on your mic when you join. Um, a best practice is if you're joining a meeting where a lot of people have already joined to just go ahead and join muted so you don't interrupt any conversation or presentation that has already begun. You can adjust this once you're in the meeting as well. Um, keep in mind, this is just for you to decide your settings. No one can see you or hear you yet. Now I'm going to go ahead and select join now. Um, I'm officially going to join the meeting, which means then people can hear and see me once I have my camera or mic on. All right, and I hear someone in the lobby, and I'll go ahead and admit Asaita into the call. So now we are here within the Teams meeting, and I am having a one-on-one -on -one call with Asaita here. Um, what you would notice is as more and more people join the meeting, we would actually fill the screen in a grid view here. Um, I'm sure many of you have experienced that before. So just because today it's a one-on-one -on -one call, um, we each fill the screen for each other. So 
what I wanted to walk you through today is mostly uh, up in this right hand corner, um, but just to kind of talk about what we're seeing here. On the left hand side, we have our meeting minutes. Um, down here, I see Asaita's name and I can see her mic settings. And then if we filled the screen um, with the grid option, we would see any extra users kind of filling the bottom of the screen here. <laughs> There's Asaita. Hey, Asaita. So first I'm going to hop into this participant list here and let's poke around with all of our options here. Um, and there is a bit more that lives here than you would think. So first and foremost, we can see who's in the meeting, right? We can see who joined. And I see a site is here and I am logged in as Johanna today. Underneath that, we can see others who were invited to the meeting and then we could also see their response. So uh, these three users are just demo users, so we will cut them some slack today for not attending. Um, but if they had accepted or maybe accepted tentatively, that is where we could see that underneath their name. You'll also notice when I hover their name, I can actually request that they join the meeting and that's going to dial out to them um, and essentially call them into the meeting. Up at the top here, when I hover over a site his name who is actually in the meeting, I see um, an ellipses appear. So if I click on that, I have some more options. Uh, truthfully, as a general rule of thumb inside of Microsoft Teams, if you see that ellipses, I would highly encourage you to click on it. There is just so many more things that live in those ellipses. So many questions are answered within that ellipses. So uh, be curious, definitely poke around. You might just answer your own question by clicking into one of those. So when I click into a site's ellipses here in our call, I see some options here. I could mute her. She's actually already muted, so that option is grayed out. I could pin her, spotlight, or make her an attendee. I could also remove her from the meeting here. So let's kind of talk through what these mean. So our first option here is pin. When I do that, it actually pins a site to here in the bottom left you see now a little pin icon. Um, so that actually pins her to the full screen. So we were uh, on a one-on-one -on -one call, so she was already my full screen, but if we were in a call with, you know, any, any more than one on one, um, she would be pinned to the full screen. Now, the difference here is that pinning is a personal choice. So when I pin a Saita, it is just pinning her to my screen for full screen. The other option here is spotlight. When you spotlight someone, it highlights them for everyone in the meeting. So that means it's, it is making a site to full screen for every person in the meeting. So what the difference there was when I pin, that is just for me. And when I spotlight, that is for everyone in the call. So there's plenty of different use cases there, but if there is you know, a, a speaker on the call and you wanna spotlight either their presentation or their video, that's a great way to do that. Um, or if you are just wanting to expand one person's video feed, maybe not for everyone in the call, that would be a pin option. And I will go ahead and stop spotlighting. You can also spotlight yourself for a call. So if you're going to be the, the key speaker on a call, you could actually put yourself into spotlight. That will make you the full screen for every viewer on the call. The other option we had there was to um, make a site an attendee. So you can actually adjust the settings um, inside of your meeting for your participants, whether making them presenters or attendees, and that just gives them more or less uh, power within the meeting. So the ability to, um, you know, mute or unmute others or share their screen, right? So um, it's going to either add or take away some of those abilities. For example, if I were to make a site an attendee, she would not have the ability to mute others or share her screen. There's a couple places to adjust this setting. This is just one of them. I'm gonna show you the other places as well. Some of the other settings we have here in the participant list um, is I have a dial line at the top. So I could actually start typing someone's name in my organization and I could call them into the meeting or I could type a phone number um, and you know, call that user into the meeting via a phone number. Um, it doesn't just have to be a, a name of someone in your org. The other setting we have here that I think is commonly missed is this copy join info button. Um, so, 
Did you want me to um, pause you during the call to ask questions or do you want to wait until the end? Uh, either works. OK, uh, there was this a question here. Um, can you spotlight multiple people? That's a great question. I, I don't think that you can spotlight multiple people at this time, but I want to say that is a feature that's coming down the pipeline. Is that correct? Um, I believe you can. I think this is there now, but Stacy Nash, Stacy, um, anybody who's on the call, do you guys have an opinion on this? I thought you could only spotlight one, and I okay. thought that was more of an organizer slash presenter being able to spotlight a particular person for everyone versus pinning it would be a user preference. Got it. OK, so I think that's correct because you were not able to spotlight both of us here, right, Darby? That's correct. Now, one thing you can do is you can pin one user and spotlight a user, so that might be a workaround for now. Um, if you specifically need someone's feed, you can pin and spotlight. Uh, but for right now, I believe you can only spotlight one person at a time. And then another question in regards to the spotlight is, can any attendee spotlight an attendee? Um, if you are an attendee in the meeting, not a presenter or just a participant, you may not have the ability to spotlight others. Uh, but if you're just a typical participant in a meeting, yes, you should have that ability. Thank you, Darby. Mm -hmm. You can as a user or as an attendee, you can pin someone if you okay. want to. That's good to know. Awesome. Are there any other questions? No, the rest I can answer. I just wanted to, this was coming up continuously, so I wanted to call it out. Perfect, thank you. So um, what we have here is the copy join info. And I, I feel like a lot of us have found us in this situation before where you hop into a meeting and a colleague reaches out to you and says, I can't find the join information or I, I don't think I was forwarded this. Can you find it? And now you are scrambling to send them the join information to the meeting. Uh, but what you can actually do is just copy the join information here and that's going to copy it to your clipboard. I'm going to send it in the chat here. Typically, you would probably send it um, in a one on one chat to whoever needs the join information. But what you'll see when I paste is the meeting join. Um, so that's a really quick way to send someone access to the meeting if you need them to join on the fly or they just can't find the invite to hop in. All right, clicking back here. And then the last thing I'll show you when the participants is in this ellipses here at the top. So here are a couple other settings that you have. Um, if you do delegate tasks to certain attendees or you make certain participants attendees in your meeting, you can allow them not to unmute themselves. This is another place you can manage your meeting uh, permissions, meaning making others presenters versus attendees, um, enabling or disabling the lobby, right? That can be done here. Um, I'll show you another place that that can be done as well. And then this is also where you can download your attendance list. So keep in mind this download as of right now is more of a snapshot in time. Um, so I would recommend hitting that button when you're at peak meeting attendance. Um, just that's just the way the feature works for right now. It's going to give you an Excel file of everyone that was in the meeting when you selected the download button. Next, I'm going to hop into chat here. And let's take a look at some of these features. So inside of your meeting chat, what you should see is any messages that are sent back and forth. Um, and others in the meeting can also send messages to you. Everything works very similarly to how it works when you're not in a meeting. So the first thing I will call out is this little navigation bar under the type a new message. So if you have played around with Teams a bit, this should look very familiar. They did a really nice job keeping that consistent in the Teams platform. So um, essentially any place you can type a message looks the same. Uh, so we still have our ability to hit that formatting A. You know, that gives us this ribbon at the top. It allows us to hit enter without sending a message. We still have our emojis and our GIFs and our stickers here and any potentially any apps that your organization has enabled. Uh, typically, you can also attach files in here through the chat. I think just because of the way I'm accessing this tenant today, um, it's not showing that option, but there should be a little paperclip icon here where you could send files back and forth. 
All of your meeting chat is designed to be persistent, so you can actually find it once the meeting is over. Um, I believe Bridget's is going to cover that in tomorrow's session, so I won't spend too much time on it. But that is why it is so great, right? Because if you're having a side conversation in a meeting, if you're sending documents that supports what the person that is presenting is talking about, it's very easy to go find it all the next day. I'll also show you back into the chat again later when I start the recording for this meeting so you can see what that looks like from the chat as well. The next feature we have here is the raise hand feature. So that one um, is relatively new into GCC tenants, um, but that is just the ability to raise your hand in a call. So when you do raise your hand, you should see a notification in the participant list and the hand next to the user that has been raised. If a site were to raise her hand in this meeting, we'll actually kind of see her glow here, and then I would also know as a presenter that she has her hand raised. So there she goes. So a site to raise her hand, I see very clearly, right? She um, kind of had a, a, a gold glow around her, and then I, again, I can see here in the participant list that she has her hand raised. So that's a great way to keep track of questions. Um, you could see hands go up and then pop into the participant list and kind of go down the line. Uh, also, newly added, you can lower someone's hand. So again, clicking into that ellipses by a site's name, um, you know, if she had her hand raised for a long time after her question had been answered, maybe she forgot to take her hand down, I could actually lower her hand here. Is the raise hand feature something that everyone has been trying or playing around with? What we can do is I'll send a quick um, announcement in the Q&A and go ahead and like my message if that is something that you have played around with. All right. So the next button we see here in my meeting is the breakout rooms icon. So like I said, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because Glenn is going to do a full detailed session on this later today. I definitely it would encourage you to attend that. But just to kind of give you a quick preview of what it looks like. First and foremost, you are only going to see this breakout rooms icon if you are the organizer of a meeting. So that means you created the meeting, you sent out the invite. If you are not the organizer, you probably will not see that this icon in your meeting. Um, so that's the first nuance. So if you've noticed, sometimes I see breakout rooms and sometimes I don't, that would be why. So when I click on that button, it's just going to open a breakout room card for me to create my rooms. And again, like I said, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here because Glenn will later, but I just kind of wanted to show you a quick preview. So we can select up to 50 rooms here and I can either automatically have teams assign those users into rooms or manually I can pick who goes in what room. Keep in mind, even if you do this automatic, you know, you have it take your 50 meeting attendees, put them all in rooms. You can kind of pick and choose, move people around after the fact if you would like to. And then finally, um, the last button we have here has the most in it, and that is the more actions ellipses here. So this is where a lot of different settings live. So let's just kind of break it down at the top here. Uh, first and foremost, these are kind of like housekeeping settings, in my opinion, you know, places to kind of check your own settings, check the meeting um, and just kind of get a feel for what's going on. So first, you've got your device settings here. This is the exact same device settings uh, icon that shows up in your pre meeting screen. So you can also check it mid meeting, right? If all of a sudden your audio goes out or you, you know, your mic goes out, maybe check and make sure it's still connected here. You also have got your meeting options here. So this is the screen I was telling you over and over. There's a million places to find this. You can even do it before the meeting and in three different places inside of the meeting. So um, this is where you can actually mid meeting adjust some of the settings in your call. So uh, first and foremost, um, if you have a lobby set up, you can actually decide on a per meeting basis who can bypass the lobby. You can decide whether callers can bypass that lobby. Um, you can decide whether or not you would like that sound to ding every time that someone joins or leaves the call. 
that's up to you, right? Typically, the bigger the call, you probably don't want to leave it on. It just gets a little bit distracting. And then here is where you can decide who can present. So right now, everyone in my call can present. We're all equal here. We can all share our screen. We can all you know, mute and unmute others. But I can actually change that. So I could change that to just people in my organization. I could change that to specific people or only me. So that's just a good call out depending on what type of call you're going to be leading or a part of. If it is a very structured call, you do not want others hopping off of mute or interrupting or sharing their screen, um, you might want to lock this down a little bit. If it's a more collaborative call um, where you know everyone can share their screen, we're all sharing ideas, then you know you likely go ahead and let everyone present. So there's a couple use cases there. You know, you'll just have to proceed with what you are trying to accomplish. You'll notice when I click specific people, it will actually have me select who. And then finally, um, if you do make others attendees in your call, meaning they're not presenters, you can decide whether or not they can unmute. So a lot of settings there to consider. Again, you can adjust this before the meeting and during the meeting in multiple places. Some other settings we have here are our meeting notes. Um, Nash may have touched on this earlier because you can start your meeting notes before the meeting, but you can also take notes mid-meeting. Um, and once you open your meeting notes, it kind of looks like a wiki page. There it goes. And we can all take meeting notes here. One thing I have noticed is um, once you are typing in a certain section here, it actually locks that. So two people can't type in the exact same section, meaning this block here. They could always add a new section and type there. Um, so I would say it's a best practice to assign one or two people to meeting notes because it could get a little bit chaotic um, because it locks the sections while others are typing in them. I'll hop back into our call here. And then finally, we have our meeting details. So this is again another place you can copy that join information and just see the meeting set up here. And then on to some of the fun settings here in the meeting options. So we have this gallery view, which is the default, um, just that grid view. And then we have a large gallery view. This is live now. It just only turns on um, if there are more than nine videos on at once in a call. So if you've seen this grayed out, it's just because you may not have enough people in the call or enough people with their video on in the call. And then together mode, same thing, right? We need at least five people uh, to get that turned on for your call, but it should be live right now. We've also got the full screen mode, so you'll notice when you first jump into a Teams meeting, it may not fill your screen, but you could use the full screen button to do that. You can have a the Teams meeting call you, so if you would like to view on your device but listen on your phone, you could do that. Um, a site is also going to cover the uh, mobile app tomorrow, which is a great way to join on the go as well. Then we have got our live captions here, so we could turn on live captions for the call. And then finally, we have got our recording. So when I select the start recording option in Teams, what you're going to see is a banner will appear across the top of the screen to let everyone in the call know when the recording has started. And there it is. So this went to me to let me know I started recording and um, I should verbally let everyone know that I'm going to record the call, but they're also going to see a banner. Now the other place that they will see is in the chat here, so they'll be able to see exactly when in the call the recording was started. Once we are all done with our meeting and you know we have recorded it all and we're ready to stop, the stop recording button lives in the exact same spot and I will just hop in here and stop the recording. When I do that, my recording's being saved, but you're gonna be able to find it here in the chat, which is a great shortcut into finding the recordings for meetings. Um, and Bridget's gonna cover that in detail tomorrow. I actually think she's gonna use this meeting as an example. Um, so you'll be able to find that recording and these notes and these chats very easily once the meeting is over. The other settings I wanna cover here, I know we're getting close on time, um, but of course you have got your 
audio and video settings. You can adjust those at any time during the call. Uh, you also have got your share content button. So when I select this, it should actually open a tray at the bottom of your screen. Um, and anything that you may have open will be suggested. So I could select any of these pages that I currently have open to share with you. Or the first option here is to share your desktop. That will actually share everything on your screen. For example, right, how you can see my Windows Start button. That's how you know I'm sharing my desktop. And um, if you just wanted to share a specific page or a specific app, you could do that as well. And then here um, it will also kind of offer up any PowerPoints, other documents that you may have open to share. You can browse for other documents here via the browse button. And then finally, um, a very important point to make is if you are sharing a video in a meeting to share with others, what you'll want to do is make sure you select this include computer sound button um, because that is going to make sure that they can actually hear the audio from the video that you're sharing. So for sharing a video, make sure you uh, include the computer sound here. And then finally, the last button I will show you here within meetings um, um, is actually, oops, yeah, was there a question? Yeah, let me just interrupt real quick. There's a yeah. couple of questions I think that would be helpful. Yeah. Um, how do you access meeting options prior to the meeting starting? And I think um, Nash covered that, but if you quickly want to show from the calendar. So to access the meeting options before the meeting has begun, if you go to your Teams calendar and you click into the meeting, you can do this in Outlook as well. What I see here is the meeting join link, and I'll actually want to click on this meeting options button. So when I do that, you'll see it's going to launch a page open on my browser. And here is where I can edit those settings before the call even starts. Were there any other questions I could help with? Yeah, one other question that continues to come up is okay. do you need to stream to do recording? Um, that's a tricky one. So well, I today, today, let's answer from the current. <laughs> Yes, so for right now, your recordings uh, would go to Microsoft Stream. So you could, everyone on the call should have access to Microsoft Stream and you can access any of the calls that you hit record on there. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, just the best way why we hesit hesitated a little bit is because we do have coming soon um, on a roadmap where you can actually save your recordings to OneDrive or SharePoint. So. That is why Darby and I hesitated a little bit on that. But I've also I also know that a lot of organizations have disabled the recording capability. Um, so if you don't see it, I don't want you to think of something wrong with your system. It might just be a setting that has been put in place uh, by your organization. Awesome. All right. The, the last thing I wanted to show you here um, is just actually within the leave button of the meeting. So what you'll notice next to leave is actually a drop down menu, and this is a well hidden feature, but um, you can leave a meeting as usual. It'll hop you out of the meeting, but you can also end a meeting, which kind of force ends the meeting for everyone on the call. So that's kind of a way to end the meeting for everyone all at once. I just wanted to call that out to you. I know there's some good use cases for that, and you do have that option here. It's just in the drop down of the leave. So with that, I believe I'm at time, but I hope that this was helpful. I really just want to encourage you all to be curious with your Teams meetings. I know it can feel daunting to try out the new settings when you're in a real Teams meeting. So my best advice is to just, you know, create a call just to poke around or use this Meet Now functionality to hop into a meeting alone and test out some of the features, be curious and learn what they do before you're really in that meeting setting.